There's nothing else in the world like this here. It, there's nothing left like this to where a person could come out here and, and purchase something and take it home and, and make it a showpiece. When you come here, and I've had many, many friends come here, and I brought them here and say, Connie would say, well, bring them on. If they're your friends, you can come. So I bring them and I show them, and the instant they get here, it all always happens the same way. Oh my gosh, I can't believe what I'm seeing. And everyone does it that comes, everyone. No one misses that part. We have the privilege here, there's very few ME 109s left in the world. We have six here, and uh, they were all in the movie Battle of Britain. The two-seat dual control 109 is the only one that can fly, that's flying right, or would be flying if we put it back together. But it would be the only one that's flyable in the, United, in the world. The other part of history is Adolf Galland flew this thing in the movie Battle of Britain. He was flying it. and. The, uh, the other, the British ace flew it. The German ace and the British ace flying the same airplane together. I mean, it's, it's, it has that, that, to me, that's a value. The love of flying, if you're a pilot and you, you love airplanes, this is what you really want to look for. This stuff can go anywhere in the world. It has that much of a history and that, that it means that much to many, many warbird people. Keep it flying. Like the old warbird things, keep the warbirds flying. And these are these are masterpieces and we want to. To me, that's the value part. Not sitting in a museum somewhere just drawing dust and uh, being a collector's item. I'd rather see them flying. Well, I'm not a collector. I mean, uh, I think they've collected me. Uh, I, it's not a museum, it's not a collection, and, uh, <laughs> and so if someone wants to go and see old airplanes, go over to the commemorative Air Force or whatever, if they've still got any. <laughs> right. Well, I've ended up, I ended up with, the, uh, with all this uh, big bunch of Messersmiths from the Battle of Britain movie. And, and how I ended up with that many Messersmiths, I brought back is they owed me a bunch of money at the end of the movie, and, uh, and they was gonna give me an IOU, and you don't want to take an IOU from any movies. I've never been in one that, by gosh, that everybody didn't get stung. I just told them that uh, I'll take uh, airplanes. So I ended up with, I think it's 16 Messersmiths, and I traded uh, two of them for, for their Spitfire, which this is, this is the one I flew during the Battle of Britain and got shot down 72 times in this plane for actual takes. And I shot down 128 times the Messerschmitt. Only Brits would keep count. I didn't have the foggiest idea, but I did it for dang near a year. And so uh, I ended up with a, packing them up and shipping them back, and that's how I ended up with all of these. And, and having not been an amateur when I went there. I'd already had many, many hours in P-51s, and a Hellcat, the Bearcat, a SBD. I, hell, I've flown them all. And, and so I'm pretty good authority on what a plane will do. The, uh, it's a good example of P-51. Uh, boy, at war emergency, you've got about, if you're lucky, uh, 3,200 foot a minute rate of climb. Spitfire, this is Mark 9 right here. It's lucky to get 4,000 foot a minute. Now this 109 over here with a derated engine will climb 5,800 foot a minute. The only thing P-51 will do that a Messerschmitt won't, it will go a lot further and it can catch in a dive. But it's not gonna shoot you down because it can't turn. Uh, boy, you get 300 miles an hour in a P-51 and you're almost locked in there with your, because your ailerons are so heavy and the Spitfire is one heck of a lot worse. Given the same pilot, same experience in a Spitfire or a P-51, the Messerschmitt is head and shoulders over it.
I turned uh, turn 80 uh, this year, this month, and uh, I'm still in great health, and I still enjoy flying. But at 80 years old, and I lost my son tragically uh, last year, and he was an absolute uh, superb aviator. Everyone knew him, his name was Tex Edwards, and he was, of all things, killed in a highway accident, and he was probably one of the most qualified pilots in the U.S., maybe the world. And so, and he was 41. And so, uh, so consequently, I have, I've got a uh, six and a half year old grandson and a, a, almost a two year old granddaughter. And so consequently, there's nobody else around here to, you know, for all this stuff to go to. So, so yeah, but, Someone uh, don't need to come down here and think they're going to get a bargain. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I don't need these bargain hunters. <laughs> but it's uh, but I've been I've enjoyed my flying life. I've uh, uh, I busted a few of them and uh, and I got my RAF wings for Belly Land, a burning Spitfire out near Bedford, England, uh, during the Battle of Britain movie. But all I can say is that I've probably lived more lives than anybody I know. 